Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast. This is a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take on various topics that tend to cross one's path when you go off in this adventure of communicating with images. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drost. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Rob Stenzinger. I, I do user experience design, uh, coaching, and advocacy, and uh, education. So that's, that's my title this week. Ah. And we have a special guest with us today as well, uh, John David Guerra. Is that or Guerra? It's fine. Guerra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. Welcome. Uh, yeah, creator. good to have you back. Yeah, it's yeah, it's been a couple of years, and uh, and I think I'm excited to to check in with you and learn what's been up with Nightmare Pro Wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> super cool. What's, um, um, what, what are some other th uh, thoughts? I mean, so you and Jersey collaborated on a re the recent um, update to that comic as well. And it's been super fun seeing that go out. And I've, we've mentioned it on the show a few times as well. And then like the, the UI, it, I'm excited. I got a couple of questions about that because um, <laughs> uh, it's a neat reading experience. And, uh, and, and it's obviously a really, really fun comic about, I mean, it's, let's, let's see if I can do the commercial quick. So <laughs> it's, um, so it's it's a it's a comic in a fantasy world where uh, you've got uh, monsters from your your classic movies, and instead of you know I don't know doing monstery things like you know creeping around, they're wrestling, and it's it's really exciting <laughs> and awesome. So, uh, and it's all at uh, nightmareprowrestling.com. Right. Um, yeah, I uh, I actually need to work on that pitch myself. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really got that one down, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a world, it's a monster world where wrestling is like the biggest thing and uh, uh, the, the wrestlers battle to become the next Nightmare Pro Wrestling champion. And it's, it's more of a, it's, yeah, I do need to work on that pitch. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if I could contribute some language to the pitch, um, what it reminds me of is, you know how in like the 1970s, early 80s Muppet show, the Jim Henson Muppet show, it always walked right up to the line of, is this appropriate for kids? Are we getting into some weird areas here? Um, like, like somebody po posted a, a GIF recently of Kermit the Frog dressed as Indiana Jones shooting a Nazi and like that actually happened on the show, you know, and it's like, OK, like it's like, well, you know, it's like nobody's going to argue with that except that it's weird. You know, it's like, I feel like Nightmare Pro Wrestling has like this joyous, cheerful, bombastic spirit that is also expressing some truly like if you think about it too long, it's really upsetting. Like the, the, the beginning of the story starts with the arena, which is on the back of this giant tortoise smashing through a city. Right. And then it stops where it wants it. I'll pull up the page. I was just looking at it on, on screen. It's, it, it gets to where it needs to be and then it roars and then it like starts pounding into the ground to dig it like a, a trench for itself so it can settle down. So the castle on the back where all the wrestlers live can come out and go into the arena. And like the next panel, and like this is what I, this is like one of the things that I love about John's comic. And I was really uh, glad that I got to draw this scene is like the moment he's finished destroying this city to like settle down so the match can be in. You see all these monsters just cheerfully walking along the debris and the fire and the smoke walking into the arena, which is in literally the belly of a monster, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I think I even included that. Like, uh, it's funny you say Muppets, because I think I might have included that, like, in um, when sending out the scripts to you guys, like to the artists. Like, I was like, this is like a fun Muppet monster kind of world, you know? Um, uh, you, you also used the word, uh, like, a while back, I think when we were talking, like, online, where you said, uh, it's like a celebration of pro wrestling yeah. and like that kind of aspect of it. I think it's also um, like a celebration of the macabre where it's like more like fun monstery kind of stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. The same, the same kind of fun. Like when, you know, you go to Halloween trick or treating and like, there's a neighborhood that I live by now and where like they do like, skeleton arms coming out of their front yard and gravestones and everything. And I'm like, uh, you know, like there's a skeleton hanging from a noose from a tree. And I'm like, well, you think about what that is representing. And it's like, this is all like really, like you said, macabre stuff, but like it's joyfully expressed. Right. Uh, it's this, it's, it, it's, it's that weird line between like, um, I don't know, I don't know how to uh, properly, uh, express it, well, but it's, I, yeah. 
I have a swing at it, right? Okay. I mean, so you have a lot of feelings, right? And you got to yeah. let them out in some way. And that's yeah. why I love where where uh, something that is theatrical and passionate and uses some some a little sprinkle of darkness for uh, puppetry and to convey meaning and symbols and stuff. And you connect with these symbols, and that's that's awesome. Like that's I love that kind of art, and and that's uh, yeah, yeah very much to the, the impression I get when I. Um, when I read this comic, for sure. And it's interesting, too, because I guess it's not as common as I, I as when we were growing up, maybe, this kind of... Yeah, I feel like also, like, um, what is it? Maybe, like, in the 70s, there was, like, this spirit of Halloween where it was, like, in a lot of stuff, like the, the Winchell Donuts Halloween, like, albums and stuff like that. Yeah. And, <laughs> I feel like, all of that fun stuff. Like uh, that's the kind of like fun Halloween spooky kind of stuff that I that I really enjoy. So uh, I try to express that like in the comic also, or like like let's say uh, Halloween episodes of cartoons, or Halloween like a uh, like the Treehouse of Horrors and The Simpsons. You know, mm-hmm. it, it also skates that line. You know, like if somebody gets de- uh, decapitated, you're not going to see the blood squirting out, but you are going to see like you know, the fleshy part with the bone kind of like right. there. you see their head fly <laughs> off, you know? <laughs> and again, that, that, that skirty, that dark humor where it's like, you know, dad, you killed the zombie Flanders. It was a zombie, you know, like that right. kind of thing where it's like, well, don't, don't spend too much time thinking about it. Just keep moving, you know? Uh, but yeah, like I, I had on the screen uh, another scene that I love drawing, which was the, um, uh, the ring squid. You know, before the match starts, there's this interdimensional <laughs> squid that lives beneath the wrestling ring, and it's just grabbing referees and fans out of the stands and eating them, and then sliding back under the, you know, the <laughs> mat. But but yeah, everybody's very like Flyman, who is like the 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 babyface commentator, uh, is like all he's just as cheerful as he ever would be, right? Because like this is all right. this part part of the world that they live in. So yeah, it's just this normal thing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, I mean, we should say at the top before we get, we're going to dig into like managing this project because another aspect of it is you hired a bunch of different artists to all draw different matches in this sort of WrestleMania called the best of the belly of the beast. Um, and the first story that uh, the first 20 pages was drawn by me, which is now all online at nightmareprowrestling.com. So you can read the first match in its entirety, but there's more matches to come all by really stellar artists. Oh my gosh. Some of these stories look so darn good. Um, and the, the poster, the cover of the book looks amazing. Um, so, I mean, we can start by saying top notch, everybody should read it, but what, you know, in a very lean into arty way, I think it'd be worthwhile to dig into, okay, well, how did you, John, like navigate this complex project and how are you thinking about it moving forward? Uh, are you ready to dive into it? Yeah. All right. Well, then we got to hit the music. Continuing with the theme. <laughs> He's really quite amazing. So <laughs> diving into the topic, we're in the first part of the show now. So, um, you know, I thought it might be a good idea to think about you got this thing where you're writing it. You are also, and I've done this before myself, like back in like 2007, I did a, a comics anthology called Sugary Cereals for a year. And, you know, there were lots of things that were dependent on other things being finished. And there were lots of things that required me to schedule things out months and months in advance and work with a v- big group of people to figure out where they were at any given point in the, uh, of the game. So I don't know if we could navigate that a little bit with like how it worked for Nightmare Pro Wrestling, John, is like, how did you, you know, what, what did, uh, figuring out the, the, the production timeline, where did that start? How did you think about it? What was it like when you started like actually like... Uh, well, rolling the plan out. The first idea was that I was going to do all of it. <laughs> and then uh, I was like, wow. Yeah, I, I started and I got a little scared. <laughs> no, um, um, let's see. Uh, the, the original idea was for me to, to do the whole, all the comic. But then um, I realized, and th- this is going to come into a question I want to ask you guys like later on. Like I, I got to the place where I'm like, okay. Uh, I really want to get this done. Uh, I don't have a lot of time to do this. Um, and I always thought about the idea of hiring other artists to do it. 
and I already had like in my mind, like I had picked out artists, like I had picked out like Jersey and I had picked out like some other artists that were interested like in, in wrestling. But it actually wasn't until I, uh, I had a conversation with my friend Ryan, who's uh, my business partner and he helps more of the business side of Nightmare Pro Wrestling, where he was like, why don't you just hire like a bunch of other artists to do this? Cause that would be like really cool. And I'm like, well, yeah, I've been thinking about that, but as an artist, I wasn't sure if I was ready to let go of that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So when I was finally okay with that, I was like, okay, let's see, what would I want as an artist? And I wanted to be respectful uh, cause they're all working artists. So I wanted to be respectful of their personal time and their work time. So uh, I talked to them about it, got to see if they were interested. And then I thought like, okay, three months sounds like a good time to give them like 20 pages to complete. And then I would give myself three months to finish everything else. So that was like the beginning idea. Like that seemed like plenty of time in my head, which ended up changing a lot, but. <laughs> Yep. Well, you know, I, I was just I was just in a uh, a webinar about like uh, Gantt charts, like learning about how to build Gantt charts. And one of the things that the person said was plans are not optional and plans always change. And I'm like, those are both very true things. <laughs> it's like it's like it's the your your ability to adapt to how the plan needs to change is like an important skill set in managing a big project, I imagine. So, yeah, it um. It, it turned into that thing where I had to, uh, like, like you were saying, I had to take what I had and work on that while other stuff was getting done and kind of like manage everything that way. Because um, I originally was going to do all the colors also, but then I had to find a colorist so I could meet the timeline that I had. So mm -hmm. that's something else that came up that happened. But what I'm hearing is that it sounds like you got data from the artists first. Like you got feedback and data to say like, okay, as I build this timeline, let me talk with the artists and see what their needs are. Here's what I think their needs are. Let me talk with them, find out if I'm right, and then build the plan after like that consultation. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Like um, like, like when I when I sent out my, my email to you, uh, uh, you you were like, okay, yeah, I, I would like to do it, but um, you told me how long was it going to take and if, if you had the time to do it, that you would love to do it. So mm -hmm. uh, I gave you like the timeline to see if it fit in with your schedule. And mm -hmm. um, there were some other artists that um, said they would like to do it too. But and, and I gave them like an idea of the timeline, like three months. And they're like, oh, that, that would be perfect time, um, a perfect amount of time. Uh, but there were some artists that were like, okay, I might need like a little bit more time. Um, and I told them, just, just let me know. But the thing is like, you have also have to like uh, skate that line of like, how much, how much, uh, like how much rope do I give them? You know what I mean? Like, cause, yeah. cause as an artist myself, if you tell me like, oh, uh, three <laughs> months, but maybe a little bit more i'm like mm, okay. <laughs> okay. that a little bit more yeah yeah <laughs> that's I very true more. yeah, yeah no, that's i much. mean you're you're doing a lot of interesting math in that situation that sort of uh you know future predicting planning stuff that uh like you mentioned project management jersey and you're describing a lot of project management john and that's uh so you're thinking of uh what effort versus duration and I think some the the artists like how did that work both for for both of you where you're you're thinking about like this is going to eat so much time to perform the task, but then I have to divide that up among all these other things I'm working on, and so it actually has to play out over what timeline and and I guess what does that process look like for both of you? Um, I was knowing how fast I am at making comics, I was surprised at how fast Jersey was at making oh, comics. Oh, wow, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Because <laughs> I, I, was, I was sweating bullets the whole time. Like, man, I am not delivering as, as, as rapidly as I would have liked on this thing. So that's oh, good. Okay. Well, yeah, it, it came out pretty quick. Uh, so I was, uh, yeah, I, I was blown away by that. And uh, like... Um, 
Let's see. Something something Jersey Jersey also did that I appreciate it was like he he sent me pencils and and he would ask how those were and then he would go into inks. And uh, also that timeline was also like uh, pretty quick and it allowed me to also like um, uh, review like the small changes and everything that I would have to do. Um, and some of the other artists who aren't as ex uh, uh, experienced making comics um, would just send me more of a finished product. And I'd be like, oh wait, you need to change this. So that would also take a, like, like a little bit more time. So that's something else mm -hmm. I also had to deal with that I didn't mention earlier where some artists are more like, um, they were animators or like character designers, or you know, they weren't used to the flow of making a comic. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I had to uh, adjust to that also. So um, yeah, it, it, it was interesting to see that difference. Um, I think I might have also, uh, uh, I think it's a little embarrassing to mention this now, but like I was almost like in awe with how Jersey would send his pages. And I think I would even mention it in my emails. It's like, oh wow, Jersey, you're a... <laughs> and I was like, uh, okay, maybe I shouldn't have typed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, no, I, I always read that as you were just really excited about the project and it made me feel like the effort that I was putting in was, was appreciated because as much as this, pro so from the artist standpoint, let me talk from that, that perspective just a second is that even though this comic, I just posted this on Twitter and, and Instagram today, is like I got to do everything I love about making comics in this project and that I got to do like ham-fisted acting because like in wrestling you're acting to the back of the stands. Um, high energy action because it's wrestling after all. You know, uh, it, cool sound design because there's a lot of like slamming and they've also gross monster noises. Um and then interesting page design because there are a lot of wrestling moves that I had to execute in the story where it's like you can't sum it up in one image, right? Like like I look for that in comics and I enjoy like trying to find that image that's like a super image that suggests before beginning and after. But there's there was a lot of wrestling moves where the character you pick them up, you put them over here, you put them over there, you spin around and you throw them on the ground kind of <laughs> things. I'm like, okay, that can't do that in one drawing. So now. This one move, which is really supposed to be like one panel, I got to turn it into three somehow in a way that doesn't crowd the page. And how can I suggest the energy of that movement so that when they hit the mat, we feel it, that they're hitting the mat? So, like, it was super challenging. It, like, it did ask me to level up in a lot of ways that I hadn't done before. So when I did it and I, like, pushed it across the table to John, like, because especially knowing that John knows these moves a lot better than I do, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> is it good? You know, like that. Then when John would be like, it's amazing. I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so I never read your responses as effusive. I always felt that they were like a, a, a salve, you know, because I'm like, oh. I'm kind of crusty. This is hard. <laughs> then you're like, it's amazing. <laughs> okay, phew. Um, but and I, mean, I was in the background sweating bullets like, oh, was that professional <laughs> or not? I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> See, I'd love that though. Like, that's where, uh, like, I'm seeing good, um, like, like a real teamwork happening there, right? I mean, I'm sure you have your teamwork going on with your other collaborators and whatnot too, John. It's just that that whole. Um, I love that when you're working with someone and and you're you're able to sort of just be a little more, uh, well, less robotic and less like this is a transaction. Allow me to provide the you know <laughs> the the thing in exchange for this you know compensation right. have a great day yeah. you know it's like okay fine but yeah if there's a little bit of wow yeah i love it or what that's i don't know I, or like the a real hard conversations the openness like if you if you open up for for the whole uh the the creative effort to have a little more openness to a broader range of i don't know just human human emotion that's neat. yeah. That's awesome. I don't know. There you go. So look at me yeah. being effusive about <laughs> you being effusive. So take that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, but I want to back up just a few steps to talk about, cause you were hinting John a little bit at like different working styles, like working with people who all have different approaches to this thing, because like, I feel like managing a project means that you have to be so darn adaptable so that you can't, because like I've caught myself in my early days, my younger, more severe days, um, 
I would be working with one person, everything just goes great. And I feel like we're really hitting, we understand each other and we both have this sort of spirit of collaboration and, uh, you know, uh, submission to the goals of the project. And then there'd be like this weird disconnect with this person over here. And I'm like, why aren't you getting it? Right. Like that would be my response. Like, why, what are you not understanding? This dude gets it right. What, what's your malfunction over here? You know, and I'd get a little frustrated with it. And as I get older and a little bit more experienced with this thing, I'm like, well, no, everybody's got different approaches. And if, if I feel that static, the next question is I got to go like, okay, well, what is it? Where's your background? Where are you coming from on this? And how can we sort of meet each other halfway? So I'm wondering like, how, how do you approach that? Or how do you think about that when dealing with so many different kinds of working styles? And if you could explore a little bit of like, like navigating that tension for people who want to do big projects. Uh, I, I was actually worried about that at first. I was worried that I was in a butt heads with somebody and, it was just not going to work out. Um, uh, luckily, I, I didn't have any of that experience, like with any of the the comic book artists. Um, uh, so much so, when I was actually looking for like somebody to d design like some shirts, I ran into an artist who I'm not going to name, but uh, where he was overly aggressive about me not knowing what I wanted when I had sent exactly what I wanted. And I was just like, how much more could I have put in there? I kind of like took the blame on myself. Like, did I not include all the details I needed? You know, like, but I'm like, it's all there. I wrote it all down on the prompt or not the prompt. What do you call it? Um, oh, your brief? My brief. Yes. Yeah. And, and it was all in there and everything like that, where I almost like, like, uh, tried to figure out why he responded that way. And I, mm. I still haven't figured it out, but, mm. uh, you know, uh, I, I still talk to him and everything like that. But okay. uh, as for the, the comic book artists, um, uh, I didn't, th they were all like very kind and very giving, like with their time and with their patience and with their, uh, um, when you turn, you know, as a comic book artist myself, I'm like, I never want to work for the man. <laughs> And then you become the man and then you're like, you know, I, I also try to like, uh, I was, I was worried about sending too many emails being like, Hey, where are the pages? You know, where are the next pages? Like what's going on? Like, where's the, the revised page? Um, right. but, but luckily all of the artists were very kind. And like, like I said, like, like, a uh, very giving, they made corrections that I needed. They, um, if um, uh, uh, Tanner Johnson, who does like, uh, he directs like some DuckTales episodes and works on DuckTales. Uh, he was very busy and uh, his timeline was like a little longer. And then it got like a little longer after that, and, you know, and it just kept going, but um, he was still very giving with his time. And when I would ask him to make corrections, like if he, he forgot to add in details of like the championship belt or something like that. He would, he would go back and he's like, Oh, no problem. And he would like draw it out real quick, you know, and that I really appreciated when, um, but um, yeah, I, I didn't, I really didn't have any hiccups that I can think of when it came to like the comic book artists. Um, hmm. I think also just like, like talking about the, the other artists that I did, I think trying to have like a, trying to be as clear as possible. I think if you're, if when you're working with somebody and even if you do butt heads with them, uh, you know, roll with the punches and try to adapt to it and be more understanding. I think, especially if you're an artist yourself, like uh, I put my, myself like in, in his shoes and it's like, oh, maybe he's like, a little overworked, maybe, you know, like knowing that he's also a working artist and everything like, um, um, what's yeah, interesting though is, is when I'm hearing perspective taking in there, which is something Rob and I talk a lot, a lot about on this show, uh, as you know, advocates and teachers, like that's and Nate Marcel's in the chat. And I know Nate will back us up on this too. Is like, as a teacher, you do a lot of, of perspective taking in order to understand, try to understand where everybody's coming from. But like an interesting thing, thing that you did that I think is worth underlining is you never, you never put that supposition in your emails to me. Like you never said like, Hey, look, I'm sure you're really busy, but it's just the tone was very friendly and non-confrontational. So like you could tell that you were 
you know, um, taking a gentle and, um, uh, I would say like, I don't know, fr- a, a friendly, but professional approach to reaching out to me about it. I've, I've worked with editors in the past, uh, and, and clients in the past who will say like, you know, they don't, maybe they don't do a lot of that processing before they send that email. And so I get these emails that are really strangely worded and I'm like, okay, now you're making me do work trying to figure out what you're trying to say here. What it's like, Oh, well, three weeks later, huh? <laughs> oh, well, that's how you start an email. Okay. <laughs> you know, <it's> an... <laughs> there's a, so, um, uh, I, my wife has a really good, um, she's a, she's a leader in a, um, in, in her, in her day job. And, and of course in our, in our home and all kinds of things, but like, uh, and collaborative projects, but like when, before she sends an email, she has this sort of check-in. She, she goes, is it kind? Is it, um, true? And is it necessary? Um, and she's sort of like, do I need to hit send yet or do some editing? Is it kind? Yeah. Is it true? Is it necessary? Um, I, I stole that. I'm like, Nope. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think yeah. I need to do this too for firing off something. That's like, maybe I didn't think it through enough or what have you. And, and I don't know if it's like, maybe it's just me, like in my head, but I feel also if you're, you're, you're friendly about it and like kind about it, that that will also translate into the artwork. Like, mm. I feel like if, I, th- I feel like I, I could probably tell if uh, they did not enjoy doing those pages or working with me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I could see. Yeah, thing. actually. Yeah. What, is. A, what a principle to, to follow. That's uh, it's one of the things where um, so working in user experience and connecting with teams, a lot of times you, you're, you know, as a, as a resource, you're, you're aimed at this audience and, a lot of times the secret's like, well, guess what? We need to all have a good experience <laughs> because it goes into the product, right? That's right. That's a really handy, um, um, I think that that kind of principle pays off. And um, so, and, and thinking of like that kind of patterns and principles and that kind of stuff, what, what about, um, so you're checking in with the collaborators and uh, like, did you develop a process for this or like some kind of um, like your own checklist when you're, when you're going through these stages or, or, and did you set up the stages as, as well? Of, of, how did that go? Um, I, I pretty much just like jumped in and it was like creating them as, as I went along. Like, uh, um, I, I pretty much sent all of the scripts out at the same time. Oh, so this was not in like one, one portion and then the next and the next right. it was all in parallel. Wow. Right. Wow. That's, that's pretty cool. I wanted to get all of the artists working at the same time, and then I could uh, focus on um, uh, one. One of the things that that I do regret is like with the scripts, I didn't include dialogue, hmm. and I, uh, I I had some in mind, but I didn't have them written down, and I thought that that would benefit the wrestling aspect of oh, the commentators calling the action as they're watching it, right? Which I, I feel like it did a little bit of that. But at the same time, I felt like it slowed things down once I got the pages back. Mm. But I, again, back to sending out the, the scripts at the same time, uh, it also allowed me not to have to worry about that for a little bit. And I could worry about like other things, like, like, like setting up the website, um, where I was planning on everything going. Like, um, because I plan on doing like more of this. Like, where, where were we going with that? Um, uh, you know, like uh, other projects I was working on, uh, yeah, being a parent, which is, <laughs> which is like a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear. <laughs> yeah, I can. Yes. Um, but checking in uh, with the artists um, was something that uh, I tried to do on a regular basis. But again, like I also didn't want to do it so much where it became like like annoying and and again it came to that whole thing like how would i want the person that i would be working with to respond to me you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i tried to make their experience uh like that that's pretty great like uh a lot of collaborative teams uh, get formed sometimes with uh, people of different backgrounds that maybe uh, not having as much awareness of like what it's like to do what someone else is doing on the team. And you're coming from a point of like, well, leading a team where that's the work you've done as well. So it's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. Is that, um, 
I, yeah, I don't, there's something else there too. Like, and I, maybe we can, we can try to find what that is uh, in, in the next part. Cause I mean, I, I sometimes, uh, you know, I'd like to think that, that I, I try to operate in, the, in that way as well, but it's, it, it doesn't always pan out where like, sometimes it's like someone else's uh, discipline and not someone else's work is just, it becomes more of a transaction. It becomes more robotic. And I don't know, I try to watch out for that, but it's, it, that's, it's really, I guess I'm, I'm really long-winded high-fiving about that. And maybe there's more of that essence that will come out in the, in the second half too, as far as uh, looking back at like what was working and what, what could work better and uh, that kind of project retrospective, but also like retrospective on like maybe your path and your growth and transformation in doing this project too. Like if, if that's something you'd be interested in exploring. Yeah. Yeah. Like what would future John say to past John having been through this now? <laughs> That's, that's something I'd be very interested in. I mean, as somebody who is like, you know, leading some projects, uh, I would like to hear about that experience. Where, where, where are the sharks, John? Where, where, where are the things I got to watch out for? Um, okay. I, I feel like Rob, you teed us up to take a little bit of an ad break and then we will come back and talk about those things. Um, so we're gonna come back about a minute and 30 seconds talking about, um, you know, learning experiences and before we do that, we have to thank some people who make this show possible. And those people are the po folks who support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Lena Tort is the website. What is it? Well, it's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. It's a way for you to say, hey, I believe in Jersey and Rob, and I believe in what they do. And I want to help make it more sustainable. You can do so for as little as a dollar a month. And you can also cancel it any time. So you can just do like a one-time pledge and then avail yourself of all the behind-the-scenes stuff and then check out. Or you could do it as on a regular recurring basis as these five people did, and we are so grateful to them. First up, Sophie Lawson. Thank you, Sophie, for believing in us and what we do. You can find Sophie Lawson on Twitter, at Sophie Lawson Art. And Stephen Black. Thank you, Stephen. It means a lot to us. And Stephen Stone Bush. Thank you, Stephen. It means a lot to us that you believe in us and what we do. And Shawnee Redfern. You can find Shawnee on Twitter, at Shawnee Redfern. And finally, Rachel Ross. Oh, Rachel, longtime supporter of the show. Thank you so much. You can find Rachel on Twitter at NYC Terrace. And you can join them all at patreon.com slash Lena Tart, where we, you will find all the shows we make, as well as the extra leans, the shows we record once a month, uh, only for people who support us on Patreon. Those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want. You also get access to three private Discord channels on the Lena Tart Discord. It's only for Patreon supporters. It's patreon.com slash Lena Tart. Thank you to everybody there. Uh, for your support. It means a lot to us. Thank you so much. That is so awesome. I love that, how you, you approach that ad too, Jersey. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, music for the second part. We know who this is. We know who's entering the Rowdy. ring now. Would this be uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's come to chew bubblegum. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so... Second half, uh, learning from the experience, right? Like what, what ways did this project uh, cause you to level up, John? Uh, and, and maybe we can start by just asking, like, you know, we've been kind of talking about things that went well. Um, yeah. You know, the artists showing up and being very giving and very, um, you know, not, not, not uh, difficult to work with or combative. Um, and, and part of that was be, you, you set us up to succeed. You know, like the thing we talked about the last time you were on the show is like you gave us this folder of animated GIFs of all the wrestling moves so that I could look at it very carefully and examine how the movement works instead of looking at still images of what a belly-to-belly -belly suplex looks like, right? Um, and then also in, in, in doing some perspective taking, thinking about what you would want as, as, a, uh, as an artist in this situation. But were there any surprises? Were there any, th any things that, like, it, in the whole journey that where you were like, oh, I didn't know I would have to be dealing or, or processing or managing this, but here we are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Part of me feels like, uh, and, and I don't, I'm joking when I, when I say this, but uh, part of me feels like, I, I made the joke last time we, we met, like, uh, uh, that isn't that the dream, like the Tim Burton, Matt Groening kind of dream, like, oh, taking all the credit for the work and having everybody else. Do. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I do remember that. Well, well, what ended up <laughs> happening was um, uh, 
I, I had this, something I wasn't expecting and it had nothing to do with the artwork or anything like that. It was like personally, like I felt like my artistic identity was getting lost. Mm. I found myself oh. not drawing as much, um, focusing solely on the comic, doing a lot of coloring, a lot of dialogue. Uh, it turned into that thing of like, oh, it, if I'm not drawing this comic that I created, who am I as, you know, who am I as an artist? And yeah. I would go through these phases of imposter syndrome where it would be like, it was like, like crazy where I couldn't even draw. Like I would try to draw. I'd put like pencil to paper, even like literally pencil to paper, not digitally, you know, like, uh, and mm. nothing would come out. Like I just, I was like terrified to draw like in any form, like, um, like, which, which brings me to, to like what I said earlier. Like, I want to ask you guys a question. If you guys had the opportunity to have, get more work done creatively, but it wouldn't be you working on it, would you still take that opportunity? Mm, that's a toughie. You're, you're, you're hitting me in a really, like, it's a wound that hasn't fully healed, um, is when I was working on sugary cereals back in 2007, I remember having a similar crisis where I thought, cause I, I, I contributed stories to that anthology, but not many, it was like two or three stories, but there was like a lot of short stories in that series. And I remember feeling like I'm not a cartoonist. I'm an administrator now, you know? Right. Uh, and it, it, that really, it really hurt to say that. And then, and you know, the, the logical part of me was like, you're a cartoonist because you draw, you tell stories with images. You're managing a big project about comics, you know, back off inner critic. You know, you, you don't get to take away the title because, because I'm still working in comics, you know, it's like, but that voice is so, it's so insidious in that. And, and, and like, it's like, it's in social media too. It's like, you're only as good as the last thing that you actually created. Right. And, and, um, there's this constant churn of like, well, what'd you make now? What'd you make lately? At least that's like my inner critic is in there doing that to me. And like, oh, too bad. You haven't like pushed out a new thing in like three months. I guess you're not a cartoonist anymore. Taking away the time. And then I would post up like like your work or the other artist's work. And people would be like, oh, this is so great. And uh, inside I'd be like, oh, that's not mine. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I totally get that. I totally get that. But like, yeah, so that's, that's a real thing to wrestle with, right? Um, and so when you say like, well, would I? Uh, I'd like to think... And this is a funny thing to say because, like, I, this is like me saying, like, I'm putting myself in the shoes of like somebody in a difficult marriage or something. Like, well, if I was in their shoes, I would just do such and such. Yeah, it's, I'm not there, you know, <laughs> so I'm not in their shoes. Um, but I would like to think that I would have the presence of mind to remind myself on a regular basis that this is a collaboration and that maybe what is immediately apparent to everybody is not something that I had a direct hand in, but just as you know you're the one who chose the belly to belly suplex with Haymaker and Lobo in that scene, right? Like I pictured it and I drew it, but like, you're the one who like directed the flow. I, 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 li John, as much as I love wrestling, I literally didn't know half those moves. <laughs> right. So like I, it was immediately apparent to me as an artist that like, I didn't have the knowledge to pull that off on my own. I couldn't have done it. I needed you to, to direct me to do it. Um, so, you know, I'm hopeful that with that experience in mind, I would be able to show up to a collaboration and have that presence of mind. However, I feel that exact same, like, sort of pull of like, but if I'm not drawing it, ooh, I don't know. I, I derive so much of my identity out of my ability to draw, right? Rob looks mm -hmm. thoughtful, and I am so curious how what his take is going to be. <laughs> well, thanks. I It's, it's an interesting <laughs> puzzle because... Uh, there's the whole like how we label ourselves and like sort of what we expect and we show up. It's like, I'm a this. And I, every darn podcast we've recorded, I don't know how to label myself. I, I care a lot about like this, like a dozen <laughs> things that I practice and I have the opportunity to apply them in certain ways that often get labeled as a few different things. So there's that aspect of it. But as far as the handing off of it, it's the um, like being part of a like I have a, a huge affection for being a part of a team that makes a thing and, and especially when that team becomes a band and what they make what they make 
collectively, it's like you be, get to become part of something bigger than yourself. And that has a certain um, huge appeal to me. Yet also, as an individual, I care a ton about my own evolution and development and expression of that as specific creations. So like, um, like Art Geek Zoo, the comic, I had a hard time collaborating on that. Um, my video game, Guitar Fretter. Um, it's it's uh, any of the dabbling I've looked at as far as collaborating, hiring out a little thing or what have you, I have not done the work like you did for your project, John, to be set up for success. So any of that's just been awkward and, and, uh, and ineffective because I'm super reluctant also. Uh, so it depends, like, it's like in some contexts, I, 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 no, I struggle with this. I guess that's, that's the short answer um, is I can get into a situation when, um, especially when other people are funding the project where I'm like, yeah, woo, ego, what ego? I don't care, I'm here to amplify everybody. And then yeah. it's my project, ego, it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's ego yeah. all the way down. Uh, for, still, like, and I'm trying to work on that and uh, figure that out. So. I do like what you said, though, uh, having to be like a band. I like that mm. perspective, like coming together and, as a band and creating something great. It feels that, that's it's a, it's a very visceral thing. Like if you're, if, if you've uh, played an instrument and you're in a band, like that metaphor, super, you embody it where you're literally like you're cr at the same moment at the same time, contributing to this collective thing that is inherently all of you. And uh, yeah, it's, it's wild and feels well, great. And, and this is my favorite thing about, teaming up with an anchor is not to see how how much fidelity they keep to my my beloved pencil lines but i want to see how they uh say yes and to it right um so like one mm. of the things i was thinking about i i with the character of haymaker who is this big one-eyed pumpkin monster which you'll read in nightmareprowrestling.com is i looked at your model sheets john because that's another thing john did everybody is he gave us model sheets of all the characters size relationships between the characters was so helpful um and I noticed the way you drew Haymaker's hands, they looked kind of like the Scarecrow's hands from Wizard of Oz, like being like floppy and loose, but still big and strong. Um, and I was like, okay, I need to make sure that I emphasize that whenever I draw his hands. And there's this moment where he's clotheslining Lobo. And I remember I drew the fist, I, I used my own fist as reference of like what it would look like if it needs clotheslining. And there's a certain like kind of arc that your knuckles follow, but I overemphasized it with Haymaker. So I'm like, well, his hand is like squishy. It's big and strong, but it's squishy too. So I'm going to twist it. So like that was a situation where it's like, it's not immediately apparent to maybe everybody involved or even to the audience, how much all of the parts are affecting one another. But that was something that I internalized as an artist saying like, okay, that's the direction John wants to go. I'm going to make sure that I push on that with the character. Does that make sense? Like it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not, I think that's something that's, it's like, it's almost like an exercise we have to do like yoga, like to remind ourselves that all of these pieces are affecting one another. Cause it, cause it's, it's easy to reduce it down to, well, I just colored it. Well, I just did the lettering. Well, well, did you just, right? Like there's all these things are bouncing against one another, right? Well, they also say like, if, if you did it well, that they don't notice it, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for um, sure. I think uh, something else that I wasn't prepared for was, uh, I don't like saying it out loud, but it's been like two years. I don't know if you realize that Jersey, but it's been like two years since the project. <laughs> That's bananas. That is bananas. It doesn't feel like I, that for sure. I was, I was only expecting maybe a year, maybe, but when April came around, I was like, Oh, wait a minute. I think this is around the time I sent those scripts out and I was like, Oh wow. It's been two years. Wow. And I was not expecting two years, but at the same time, when I think about how the project would have, how long it would have taken if it was just me, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, uh, that's, I mean, that's yeah. a, that's a very, uh, that's, is, isn't that sort of the, the essence of what drove your decision of like, here's where I want to go. And uh, this is bigger than me alone. If, 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 right. If, and yeah, that's, like, so you did it. And I guess, how are you feeling? 
yeah, I, I feel good. Like it, it took me a while to be comfortable with my new role with the comic. But once I was okay with that role for myself, I was able to really enjoy it, you know, like enjoy everything and where I wanted to go with it. Cause I, I want to continue doing this. Like I have more outlines planned out and everything like that. And I want to continue to create like this world, but man, it was that artist inner struggle. that was like the biggest thing like to get over. And uh, I got to say, like, I don't even think it was, it was a, uh, completely extinguished until like this past April where uh, where this other artist put up like, um, she was doing a sketch of mania for, for April. So every month there was like a prompt and you could interpret it any way you wanted and create it, create like some kind of like uh, something associated with wrestling. So I tried to do as many of those as I could and being able to draw again and test things out I was finally able like to kind of let, let that go. And, you know, and I, I made sure like to thank her for that because, you know, I think it was, it was those, that opportunity to step away from Nightmare Pro Wrestling, which was like so precious to me and just do something that I could just do on the side and kind of remind myself, hey, you're an artist. Don't be crazy. You're doing fine. Things are going great. <laughs> oh. It's 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 such a powerful thing to be able to like identify yourself in that way and like say like this this work that I do is so profoundly meaningful to me and I show up with such a commitment to it that I get to put capital A artist above my name like that that is that is like it's like a concrete foundation you can stand on for a long time but it also it's like boy when it cracks it's like you just you just fall down it's like it's like you it's it's a reminder that you can't utterly rely on it, but at the same time, it's it has a lot of utility, right? And I know as somebody who who says shows up every week says I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist, you know, um, I get it, I totally get it, uh, and I and I struggle the same way where it's like, you know, uh, it was it was I think only like three months after Science Comics Rockets came out, and I was talking with some cartoonist friends on Skype, and I was expressing the same idea of like, yeah, but I haven't done anything lately, and they're like, okay, whatever, Science Comics Rockets. I'm like, yeah, I know, I know, I did a thing, <laughs> <laughs> sure, but I haven't Isn't done anything. That it's That's so funny. Man, what a what a trick and a trap. Like to to get to the point where you feel comfortable, you've earned the mantle of a given label, and how it is a bit of a trap as well because you can be more than that. You can be more than that in series or in parallel. Because the other thing that strikes me too is that, um, like, some projects, like I, I'm a game developer, also a comic artist, also a bunch of whatever, right? Like twelve things at least. And uh, but then I, any one of them. I, I've, I'll, I'll be like, well, gosh, it's been 10 years since um, Guitar Fretter came out and I've done like six updates, in, you know. Uh, yeah, it's 10 years this year, I think. Yep. Holy crap. Yeah, seeing your reaction, Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but but uh, so am I this, am I that and whatever. And, and it's like whatever deal I made in my brain to say, I accept this label. Um, it came with some trade-offs. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting when I start going to conventions again and start selling the new comic. And mm. people are going to be like, oh, did you draw this? <laughs> I'm not no. really sure how to respond. I'll be like, well, but there's a, there's a story there, too, of you grew from, um, you, you are now more, uh, you're an individual artist. And also, um, uh, I mean, is, is it sort of, uh, I guess, what is the producer? What other... Well, lately what I've been saying is like when people ask like what I do now, I've been saying like comic book creator rather than just like comic book artist. And that seems to cover all the bases. Like, mm -hmm. um, cause I've done my own comics and now I'm collaborating like making other comics. And that seems to fit in nicely. <laughs> What's also what's also funny too is like that perspective. I could take the perspective of like I think about what nineteen year old Jersey first going to conventions would think, and he would see somebody like you sitting there with this comic with all these other artists, and I'm like, he's like a publishing guy. He's like he's like a J Jonah Jameson of comics. He's <laughs> he's hiring people. I got to show him my portfolio. You know, like I would be so like awestruck with like th that would equate to in my nineteen year old brain power, right? And it's so funny that like on the other side, it's like yeah, but. 
it's it's a it's a it's a funny business being uh, a creative person, and <laughs> but um, I'm curious, like, so do you have any thoughts? And I mean, I I know that I'm not going to ask you to obviously not to share any confidential information, but like in a general sense, like, what's your plan going forward now that the website is up and updating? Like, how are you thinking about like getting the you know uh, readers and attention and and uh, you know backing for this thing to potentially do more with it? Um, well, we were gonna wait till I was done with like dialogue completely. And actually the last issue, I need to finish putting up like uh, word balloons and everything like that. But with the whole like uh, COVID-19 and people being home all the time, uh, me and my buddy Ryan were like, hey, let's, let's just put it up online and see what happens. Let's do the website. And uh, we thought we could do it in a week. It took a little bit longer than that. <laughs> but uh yeah uh the plan is um to slowly make the website uh uh work out the bugs make it a little bit more presentable um and then uh we have a deadline of when we also want to start uh printing the comic um and doing pre-orders and we want to start like like um doing pre-orders like around october perfect so, time yeah so that so that's that's the plan and um after that um i also want to do like like um like more comics like um the, the plan is to do a whole like um anthology with uh some funny locations you know like the first one was belly of the beast the next one will be i don't know uh the the pits of despair or something like that you know what i mean and yeah. or like and some ridiculous stuff like that and um uh i even have uh a whole uh outline of um a tournament story that i want to do which is like my favorite aspects of wrestling are like the tournaments that they have like to become like king of the ring or something like that right yeah and uh mm. i have that plan too so uh yeah that's the plan like just keep going and we'll see what happens I'm excited to see how that evolves uh and, and uh this is uh yeah it's a, it's an inspiring project and it's it's neat to see your 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 progression into like turning it into like a larger team because uh yeah i need to uh to think back on that and and you know do some of that growth myself um and then I'm also like, so it's interesting too, the, uh, like the, the whole, the, the, the tournament thing too. It's, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you ever watched Dragon Ball Z, but, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite a, quite a plot, uh, mechanism. So excited to see where that goes too. Yeah. So the, what I'm, what I'm inferring from this is that the experience was such that you're ready to do it again. You're ready to dive in and try this again. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this was this was the big, the big learning experience, and uh, now I'm prepared for the things that come along with it, the good things, yeah. the bad things. <laughs> you know, something I guess like I I would just pose this as just like a, a general question that where I'm not gonna necessarily count on getting like a pat answer on it, but just as like a thinking experiment is something that I didn't experience as much working on belly of the beast that I wonder about going forward is like, I didn't have any real contact with any of the other artists who were working on the project at the time. And, um, and that's not, that's not a critique. Cause like, I, I was just thinking about how, like one of the things that's frustrating about being doing big project management versus like cartooning is like when you're doing your own book, it's like, just leave me alone. I'm drawing, right? Like you just do that for like eight hours that like you check out and now I'm to check in with my friends again, right? But like when you're managing a big project, it's like you spend a lot of time emailing and talking to people, right? Um, so like, I'm not going to complain and say like, oh, I, I wish John would have let, you know, had like a, a social forum for us to all share our work in progress. But uh, I do wonder like, what do you think about like if in, going forward with future projects, having some kind of, I don't know. I'm not going to say like a Slack channel, but like some kind of public sort of like uh, 
progress board showing where everything is and what the milestones are, and then maybe a place where people could all check in and, and share the works in progress. I don't know. That sounds like I'm ad- asking you to take on another job, but I'm just curious how you think about things like that. Because something I'm thinking about as, you know, this is a very different discipline, but like convention organizing, like A2CAF, is like one of the things that like internally we have a conversation about. Is like we want to be as transparent as we can with all the decisions that we make on the project, hmm. you know? And so like everybody, if they want to, so like one of the things we do with A2CAF is we have like an A2CAF wiki page and the wiki page has like, all the information about how to set up for the show, local, you know, uh, I don't know, like things to check out in Ann Arbor. And also it's like, here's how we do what we do. Here's our contact information. If you want to reach out to us and like during the show, if we have to make any changes, Dan Michigan would always send out emails to all the, uh, the, the exhibitors saying, here's why we're doing what we're doing, you know, but like we make them aware of the wiki. You don't have to use the wiki, but it's there if you want to, you know, avail yourself of like what's happening behind the scenes. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think about something like that, John? Like some kind of like place for all the collaborators to potentially go see where everything is, what all the milestones are. Yeah, I, I actually really like that idea. Um, to uh, For at least like, I'm, I'm wondering what would happen if you guys would actually like have uh, more interaction like with each other. That that's something that I also am inter- interested in. Like, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll I'll have to look into that. <laughs> I'll put it on the list. <laughs> it's 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 totally another job, right? That's why I say it. Like, is like it's just food for thought, and it's something I think about. But it's something that also, like, in the case of a two calf, it's like we had a bunch of people contributing to that wiki, right? It was like me and Ann and Dan Michigan and other organizers were putting information in there. So it wasn't a one person operation. It'd be different if it was, but it's like something that I remember with sugary cereals that I was trying to do. And I don't think I was terribly successful at it was we had a private forum where I was trying to get the artists to post their work in progress, to like get them to all cheer each other on. Right. But the the difference was is back then they were all working for free. And so like it was already a big ask just to get them to turn in eight pages of artwork. I'm asking a lot for that. Whereas like you're actually hiring people, which is a different thing altogether. That changes the dynamic. Right. So well, it's um food for thought uh, yet from a different place, but uh similar sort of um dynamic and because you think about creating a um some kind of collaboration that brings a lot of people together that don't necessarily need to have or or there isn't like uh because i imagine your project would have you you would have chosen some way to adapt if there if if like oh gosh there's um some kind of problem not addressed in the current what what you've set up by handing handing out resources and you know uh, reference material and all that um and i, I imagine it would have come up but uh, it, so I've seen, so I'm giving a, a couple talks this year, still events that have gone virtual. And one of the things that the organizers have done is, is uh, created a, um, I think one created a Slack channel and the other one is, uh, is in Discord or something like that. And there's a, um, yeah, there's an interesting effect as far as even just it, this ambience, it's not necessarily extra work, but just a, just a presence of like, hi, I'm here, I'm part of the team. Mm, right. that, that alone is interesting where it's like, oh, hey, that person's part of the team. Uh, send a message, connect, network, whatever, right? Other things can happen that are sort of nourishing that aren't directly feeding the project also, um, which is interesting. Yeah, uh, something interesting that also happened was um, uh, like, uh, I, I remember one of the artists saying like, oh, here's here's this panel I worked on. And I, I thought it was like really awesome and looked great. And he's like, oh, that he doesn't know the perspective worked well. But um, I thought it did. And then I, th- I think it was Jersey that chimed in. And it's like, hey, as long as it looks good, it doesn't have to make sense or something like that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's not seen- my book. What do I care? <laughs> <laughs> but he seemed, he seemed um, uh, to get a little bit more uh, confidence like with his response. He was like, oh, oh great. He's glad that he, he saw that it worked and he was able like to move on from that but um it, it would be nice to yeah to have something like that where the artists could like if they had like questions or needed like uh um feedback that i i wouldn't be able to give them like right away or something that they could look and talk to each other 
that's yeah. interesting yeah because additional layers can can happen even beyond that but it, yeah it's 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 interesting to set up a thing where people can can all be present and it can lead to all you know distractions and other stuff too but like um yeah i'm I would, yeah. you guys yes. go off and create your own wrestling comic and <laughs> oh <laughs> sure this you're going to spawn competition and right. uh <laughs> well, I I know the, the the funny thing I I feel about that is like I I feel like there's there's confidential practices that I'm sure every business has, but I feel like the the secret ingredient, a big secret ingredient of any endeavor is the spirit of the people behind it, and that's always going to be unique to that project. So were I to come up with like, hey, I'm going to do something. It's called mummy wrestling. You know, it's all mummies wrestling all the time. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it ain't going to hit the same chords that you're going to hit. It, it's, maybe it hits different chords. By the way, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time, think about this, too. This is a, this, I don't know. I, sometimes I get fascinated about the careers of uh, guitarists. And mm. I think about, there's a lot of interesting cross-pollination and stuff and how the a lot of people don't stay in one band, right? Mm. And yet it doesn't, so, it doesn't necessarily uh, cause harm. It's it, in right. a way it's just sort of like feeding the creative pool of stuff that, um, you know, sometimes, you know, people break off and do different things. More, more music in the same genre probably has more positive effect, effect than negative, probably the same case for um, wrestling comics as well. Yeah. I actually would like there to be more wrestling comics. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't mind. Like there's a, there's like a, a movie coming out actually that I think is produced by the WWE that's called Rumble or something like that. And it's like mm. Kaiju wrestling. And as soon as it came out, I had a bunch of people come up to me and like, hey, what's going on here? Look at this. They're ripping you off. And I was like, it's fine, guys. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know. That's always, yeah, ideas and, and uh, yeah, I don't know. The that's a that's a tough interesting puzzle and challenge how do you you know uh obviously becoming a uh you're on your way to becoming a larger and larger entity so there's always uh ip law that maybe is the new department <laughs> you hire <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah maybe uh because I mean, the the other thing I was thinking about as we were working on this project together is like, the, and I probably said this in the last time we were together is like, this is screaming to be a Netflix original cartoon. I mean, it <laughs> really is. Um, but yeah. Um, anything else that we didn't talk about? Um, as far as like the experience of working on this project, I like that Jersey's question with the the before we led into the segment of um, what would. Uh, yeah. So you, John, right now, what would you do if you could time travel to help past John pr be more prepared? Uh, tell him to run for it. Don't do this. No. Um, I think I would tell myself, uh, well, I know I would tell myself, like, uh, be a little bit more patient. It's going to take a lot more time. Don't create this imaginary deadline that's that you have to follow, you know what I mean? Like, um, mm. and, that, and, that, and that's not the deadline that I set like for the artists and for the project. I just feel like there's, there's cases where I would be like, okay, this needs to done, be done by me at this time and this needs to be done. And there's all this extra pressure where there isn't pressure. I mean, there should always be accountability, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. But certainly, but um, I think I, I, I tell myself like, hey, everything's going to be fine. Stay calm. Just keep doing what you're doing and it'll eventually get done. You know, um, there's always that extra push you want to give yourself because you feel like as an artist, you're not working hard unless you're staying up late and not getting sleep. Mm -hmm. And you know, and it's, I think, you know, you also have to remember that you're doing this because you love it and try to enjoy it like a little bit more. 
Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, that would be a shame, wouldn't it? If we had fun doing this stuff. Because <laughs> like, it's one of those things that like the public, when you, you meet like people who don't do art, and they're like, oh, you make comics for a living. That sounds like fun. And you're like, oh, is this supposed to? You know? And it's like... It's like I feel like especially in this particular period of um, shelter in place, there's a lot of discussion like people are saying online like, oh, with all this extra time we have in our hands, I'm like, extra time? Where, where did that come from? You know, and then I think about every parent in the world, I'm like extra time? I don't think they know what that is. You know, and, and that, that that is counterbalanced with people going like, I did 15 hours of blah, blah, blah today, you know, shelter in place, getting the work done. I'm like... Okay, let's calm down, everybody. <laughs> let's all calm down and let's try to like enjoy what we're doing just for a few minutes instead of just uh, sort of well standing on the top turnbuckle and you know doing that. Thing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I, I have a friend uh, who's who's an artist and he, you know, and it's understandable because he he has a job and uh, he doesn't really get a lot of time to draw, but. He finds himself like he has a tendency to push himself a little bit where, oh, he's like, today only had like three hours of sleep, but I needed to get this artwork done. And uh, I know that he has like, it's a little hard for him sometimes. And uh, it's not very healthy for him. (laughs) And uh, I feel like, I think I would, I would tell myself, especially like, okay, make sure to remember that balance. Like, you know, it's going to get done as long as you're doing it. You don't need to kill yourself for it, you know, like, because <laughs> yeah. personally, I know that I get more done when I get more sleep and I have more energy to interact with my kids, which I think is also, in, which is, which is important to me also, right? Like being a parent, being a husband, living my personal life, I want to be able to function properly in that as well. And, um, yeah, uh, if, if I was able to talk to myself, like, like a few years ago, I tell myself, okay, you know, it's, you know, it's going to get done. <laughs> Be cool. <Yeah>. Man. <laughs> you, you made a plan, you know, uh, but being rested and alert and thoughtful is going to help you adapt that plan on the fly and adapting the plan means that it's not going to necessarily hit that, um, milestone that you set before you knew what the project was really going to be, right? Like that's the part. Like that's the kind of thing. Like you make the plan at the beginning, you don't know what the project is going to be until you start engaging with it, and then you adjust the plan, right? So, right. yeah, it's it's really healthy to have uh, accountability and dates, like you you mm-hmm. you, well, you both said. But the, but then uh, there's a like how your relationship with that doesn't have to be sort of inflexible. It's, it's sort of like, it's like testing any kind of constraint for your project. And so um, it's, and I, I think every single in creative endeavor, every business, all, everyone's dealing with that and, and relearning that lesson all the time. It's like, like how can I keep going and not uh, ground my, grind myself down? Because, because it's an easy trap to, you know, I, I've been there and it, it you know, how, how do I have, how do I manage my own expectations for this? And how do I c- continue to shape and, and relate to these constraints of like what the project needs to be and when and all that stuff. And it's, um, I like that. I like your advice, John. It's, um, it's, it's pretty, you're, you're pretty nice to your past self. You're trying to, you know, I think a lot of young artists are just, that's the way they think. Like if, if I'm not working all the time, uh, I'm not, I'm not a real artist, you know what I Super mean? Super like, busted. I am so busted on that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Even when I yeah, wasn't I was, quite so young, I was still doing that. Yeah. With, uh, with our, with our first, with our first child, uh, I thought it would be a brilliant idea. I was like four hours of sleep every day. I can do this. Yeah. That <laughs> day started, you know, melding into days and time. I didn't know what day it was, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, super guilty of that as well. It's uh and so I think it's it's also it, it, to be kind to, you know, making those mistakes. It's okay to make those mistakes too. It's good to to be around to learn from those mistakes though. So got to you know, the if we if we can all sort of gravitate toward being kind to our past self and future self, then you know, maybe we can have more fun when we make the stuff that we make. Sounds good. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think that's great. All right, so people should all go and read nightmareprowrestling.com. There's also a store where you can get NPW merchandise. Look at this. You you got a heel gator on the website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I, 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 you know, it's funny. I've seen these these gators. Like cause I, I, I've recently fell in love with uh, balaclavas and gators uh, for winter time because I've discovered that, like, as I get older, like having my neck get cold is really, really troublesome for me. Um, and but like I would see these ads for them, and they would have like skull faces and monster faces, and I'm like, what's with the aggressive mess? And then I see John's, and I'm like, okay, that's just the right amount of aggression and cuteness, because <laughs> because it's this chubby orange monster in trunks, and his mouth is your mouth, but then your nose is his cyclops eye, and it's it's the nightmare pro wrestling monster, sort of like yeah. doing like a rage pose on your face. Uh, there's the comic books that people can get there, the the gorgeous poster from the belly of the beast. And uh, also T-shirts. So nightmareprowrestling.com. Tell your parents, kids. Um, mm-hmm. All and right. Uh, parents, yeah. parents uh, you know, help your kids out. Get some of this merch. <laughs> I, I, I just, I can't see a child in North America not loving this idea of wrestling monsters. Like, it's it, everything about it is designed to make a, an 11-year-old's brain crack open, right? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Oh yeah. Um okay. Uh so how about we take one more break and then we're gonna talk about uh our two minute practice this week? What do you guys yep. say? A really brief two minute practice check in. All right, good. sounds good. We'll come back and do that in about two minutes. Uh first we gotta thank some more people who make this show possible. And those people happen to be us, we make the show possible. We make, all, we make all sorts of things, and we think really hard when we're making those things. We bring those thoughts into this project we call Lean Into Art, and the thing that I make that I hope you will check out this week is another podcast I do called Four Million Years Later. What is it? It is two buddies, me and my good friend Hoover. Uh, we've known each other for 25 years. We've spent that 25 years talking about our love of the Transformers gener- well, the Transformers franchise in general, but we decided to start documenting those conversations in this podcast called Four Million Years Later, where we, once a week, we pick an episode of the Gen 1 Transformers cartoon in story order. We watch it, and we convene to talk about uh, our reflections on it from our, pers- our pers- perspectives as children who love the show, and then looking at it again as adults who continue to love the show and uh, joyfully point out all the odd incongruities that happen when you have a cartoon series made by so many different people, largely designed to sell toys, but also trying to find like some of the, the underlying structure and meaning behind some of these stories that these people constructed. Because my, my personal premise uh, engaging with the show is these writers were doing their level best within a sea of strange constraints. The latest episode that just uh, updated is uh, Attack of the Autobots, in which Megatron comes up with a plan where he uses invisible ability spray to infiltrate the Autobots base and uh, ch- corrupt their energizing chambers so that they all become evil Autobots and it's up to Bumblebee and Spike to stop them. It's a it's a fun episode and I get very emotional when we talk about it. Uh, you can find it at 4millionyearslater.com or your favorite pod catcher. Um, I highly recommend this show. It's super fun. Just want to, I'd love to get a look, chime in and, and before we go into my, to my ad spot. Seriously, 4millionyearslater.com. Search for it, uh, download it. And because if you like this kind of thoughtful exploration of lean into art, it's like that, but just applied to um, in a, it's like loving critique, right? So it's, it's easy to drive by and be like, oh, I don't like that thing. And here's my reaction. Look, look at me watching a thing and whatever. And I, I'm <laughs> I'm going to shock you with my feelings about this, but it's, but it's so um, it's, it's just loving and thoughtful and excited. And, and, but also, you know, you, you two bring up concerns, you know, Jersey and Hoover do have concerns about the show, but they do it in a way that I think is, it's like respectful critique. And so you just can't beat it. Like it's a lot of analysis of story and, you know, who need, who we all need more of that. In my oh, thank you for that. All right. So, Rob, you have a store. I do. And it's at robstenzinger.com slash store.html. And I sell a few things. I mentioned I, 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 I'm into a variety of creative endeavors. And uh, so you can find the games I make on the store. You can find the workshops I teach uh, in the store. And they're very helpful. They're, they're you know, things like, you know, 
collaborating with the team, drawing user journey maps, figuring out your next creative challenge, really making it your own. Um, and other useful things like goal setting and also sketching the happiest kitty in the universe. So things that are great for you, great to share with your family and stuff. Um, and they're streamable workshops. So consume them anytime that works for you. So you check that out, you'll be able to get links to the Skillshare versions or on my Gumroad. So you can just buy it and own it and hold on to it and what have you. Uh, and I also do uh, coaching. So for your creative projects, help you think through the, the things you're working on and incorporate more user-centered design and all that kind of stuff. And just go to one spot for all those things, robstenzinger.com slash store dot html. And another thing you can check out that we make, or rather we participate in, is the Lean Into Art Discord. Yes, we have a forum now where you can comment on past episodes, offer topics for future episodes, post some of your two-minute practices in the Challenges and Quests channel. And then we even have like the Gentletown channel where it's like it's 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 totally cool to ask for a high five, share some work in progress, and ask, you know, get people to say, hey, you did it. Good job. And there's also Castle Level Up where you can ask for, you know, a thoughtful critique from the Lena Tart Brain Trust. And there's even a social channel where you can just post about things that are happening in your life. Those three channels are Patreon only, but there are three public channels. We will put the invite link in the show notes for this and every episode for the Lean Into Art Discord. Thanks to everybody who's been interacting with us there. It's been fun to get to know more of you, uh, the people who enjoy what we make here at Lean Into Art. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is time for the two-minute practice. Hi, Rob. Hey, Jersey. And uh, welcome, John David Guerra, to this section of, of our show and its own individual show, the two minute practice, where we just, you know, we're trying to do things in a, in a bite sized way, keep our learning going, learn in different ways, uh, as, a, as opposed to the excitement of like a big creative challenge that's disruptive and they're wonderful. But, but what if we could just have some of those exciting experiences in just two minutes at a time? So here we are. Yeah. yeah, here we are. And so what was our practice that was given to us last week by uh, Jen Vaughn? Well, all right. So this was a thing that we, it sort of morphed as we were chatting and, and exploring. And what it became was let's, so get yourself prompted by using this technique called bibliomancy. Yeah. And then using that prompt, uh, make a three panel comic or four, whatever suits your fancy. And uh, the bibliomancy is just sort of pick a book, flip through the pages and pick a word. And then, you know, that's, if that's enough of a prompt, um, go for it. Or you could pick a couple of books and look at those words together and be like, well, what am I going to do with this as a comic? And there you go. So did, how did you do? How did, how did you find this challenge this week, Rob? Oh, fitting it in was not trivial. <laughs> Uh, I did sort of between last night and this, this just before the show actually crammed in a couple of sessions. So I think I did like three sessions total and, um, two minutes at a time. So it, that, that premise pans out, but like getting myself to say, now I'm going to do a two minute practice. That was yep. not easy this week. Yeah. So, all right. So how was it for you? Uh, I, I had a really great one. This is this is one of the only ones where I've done all of the sessions, all seven days between last week and this week. I found the time to do it. And I think cool. it was partially because it was something that was very appealing to me as an activity in the first place. It's very easy to show up for something that you really enjoy doing, which was drawing a comic strip. Um, I did not succeed in coming up with, I think Jen's, uh, one of her prompts was have a three panel comic strip that ends where it started so that it can just go oh, around and around in a circle. Good point. Totally forgot that part. Yep. I did too. I dove right into it and like right afterwards and I was like, this is fun. And then like, I totally, I, you know, I looked up some words. I'm like, okay. Um, you know, I, one, one of them was something like confining or constraints, something along that line. And the other one was something mm -hmm. uh, that was basically like the equivalent of being lost or missing. I'm like, okay, well hmm. I've got something. I had my cute little Baron von Bear character, you know, uh, trapped in a nice. cave with his friends. And then he looks and one of his little wisp ghosts is missing. And then they got to go start searching for the ghost kind of thing. Um, wow. So that so this that was, happened in 14 minutes. This is 14 minutes of work. Um, 
and I just did it on an index card to keep it simple and loose and not get too, you know, fussy with the art. Um, but I did the actual great, pencil, though, by the way. So for those of who, you know, just giving some reaction on yeah. an audio here. And by the way, John, jump in anytime. If I know you're sort of, you're coming in like, Hey, what's this all about? But like what you're, you're welcome to react anytime. Of course. Yeah, that was really great. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, the, 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 the first six sessions were just the pencils to inks. So I had one session, I had two minutes left at the end. Ooh, my white balance got all blasted out. Hello. <laughs> there we go. Um, so the last session I had two minutes left and I'm like, well, I'd really like to try to color it, you know? Um, but there's a lot of different colored characters in the scene and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that in two minutes. I just know. So I broke out some watercolor colored pencils and I said, I'm picking four colors. You get four colors. That's it. You know, don't fuss with this thing. Cause sure enough, I turned on the, the two minute timer that you put into the discord channel, Rob. And like, I think I laid down the pencil within the first minute. And then the last 60 seconds was me frantically with my watercolor brush, just going over everything to blend it all together. Um, so cool fact. if I were to reflect on the whole experience, um, the slowly building something at two minutes at a go was very joyful because, um, I've doing this practice has trained me to not race the clock. Don't race the clock. Just show up with your blue pencil. See how far you get in two minutes. And like, I think the first two minutes I had like the first panel roughly penciled and the second one started, you know? Um, mm -hmm. so like let going back to something John was saying earlier in the Lena to art cast was, uh, you know, it's like, it'll get done. Just show up and do the two minutes and just do the two minutes and then walk away from it. You know, but I could do a little bit more. No, walk away from it. you have other things to do, you know? <laughs> um, but the, the coloring one was the one where I raced the clock. Cause I was like, Oh, let's see if I could do it, you know? And it's like, okay, well let's, let's see what we can get away with, with as little as possible kind of thing. So I wouldn't call this, like I wouldn't publish this as a comic, but it was uh, a good study to see about generating some ideas for a story very quickly with minimal, um, well, very inexpensive time, an inexpensive amount of time. But I would say that if I were to make a thousand foot up view, like reflection of the two minute practices so far, I think the practice of doing the practice is training me to let go of that whole trying to make a good thing. So I think that's good. Um, I'm reminded of, of Natalie Goldberg's writing down the bones where she talks about just writing for a half hour without a, 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 an objective, just writing for the sake of writing, just to get into that state of writing. Um, which helps helps you find those first thoughts that she talks about. So, I um, I had been doing uh, two minute practices when you guys started talking about it, and mm -hmm. I originally had um, uh, monster character designs uh, for the comic, uh, but then um, wasn't really happy with any of them. <laughs> But uh, something that uh, I had wanted to start doing was with the same prompts I had talked about, like uh, on the Leaning to Art cast about like uh, that I did in April, the ones that were like wrestling prompts. Mm -hmm. What I'm thinking about doing is taking those and trying to incorporate them into some kind of monster pro wrestling design mm -hmm. using those prompts. And um, something uh and kind of like pushing the design pushing the pose of the design so it's not so just forward facing characters and uh, i mean this is going to be a test i don't know if i can do this like in 2 minutes but that is uh something that i wanted to do and uh yeah i'm going to start doing so not just oh. like a straight on profile shot or not pro profile right. shot would be sideways, but not like a straight on mug shot kind of view. But like, you know, I'm reminded of. So last year I was at the He-Man convention PowerCon in Anaheim, California, and they were interviewing. Um, there was a panel discussion with Roger Sweet, who is like the guy who like claims that he came up with the name He-Man for this barbarian character. And he was talking about designing the toys and like they were explaining why the action figures have like this sort of like their arms are like kind of hooked and their legs are kind of like shoulder width apart, you know, and like you think of action figures at that point, Star Wars, G.I. Joe, they're really thin and small and they're really like kind of rigidly posed, right? Especially Star Wars figures, right? And he's like, 
Well, you look at those and they don't look great from every angle. Like they're really meant to be looked at straight eyes. Like I wanted to design an action figure where he looks awesome at a three quarter view or side view. Right. And that's where that pose came out of. I never even thought about that when I was a kid or even as an adult. I'm like, oh, wow. Why would you have him be like that anyway? Right. Because it's not like the most na you can't have him sitting at the dinner table. You know, not like that. Ah. Um, so like this idea of can or you could design you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you you may maybe you eat dinner all boring like but I'm like hey, dinner <laughs> gobble gobble but but I like this idea of thinking about like character design from the perspective of well how do they look at other other angles because like I do the same thing where I like draw like a straight on shot and the moment I have to start drawing them from other angles I'm like uh oh what, what have I done here you know <laughs> so anyway that's a really cool idea for a prompt um that's uh and and uh, uh just to, to to jump back a little bit uh let's dive into that prompt i do want to share because i think it was an interesting uh, interpretation of our, our last week one was uh i chose to use sticky notes when i was sketching and i did not get anywhere near as far but i so i pulled a prompt so from three different books i, I found the word secret the word journal and the word process it's super funny how what how tuned is my brain to filter things into the, i mean seriously i found those words and uh <laughs> one was from a magazine from 2006 called imagine effects that's secret wow. journal came from uh the growth mindset coach book uh and then the the word process came from uh, a book about um uh, first art experiences for toddlers and twos which i'm like my kids are wow. older than that now but i'm like it's still a <laughs> the book is wow. anyway but you know so i took those and i went from uh this is just sort of doodle characters uh but let's see where where's the oh yeah so the first one i decided to set a scene so that that that, that took two minutes there's someone peeking around a corner and someone opening up i imagined it as a safe behind a painting right okay. and then there's um but someone's you know still peeking around the corner and someone now has the thing they retrieved you, from the safe could you move it to journal. your left a little bit rob my oh sorry there you go there we go awesome yep forgot the, the cropping all right and then the third panel was um, the person using their journal, but then shouting to the person spying, I know you're there. And that's it. Okay. Well, you see, so you, <laughs> you did get three panels then. I did. Um, there, you know, a very different level of, of um, representation and rendering and drawing and there's et cetera, et cetera. But like, for, that was good for me for two minutes each, you know, increment. And, uh, uh, but I, I really thought like the working on sticky notes was, was a nice way to handle this prompt for me, uh, not to get something like there's zero chance of it being like a useful product in the end, but you know, who knows concepts could come out of it and grow. That's fine. But, uh, well, you're, you're practicing thumbnailing too, because like the, all those shots had different viewing angles, which tells us it delivers very different information visually. Right. And right. And so like doing uh, like a, another uh, critical revision, I don't know if there's if the flow between those panels spatially is logical. It just mm. to me, it was just the narrative of someone is being intrusive on someone because it's like it's the word secret. It's like, well, if you're, if you're alone, who cares, I guess. Right. But but um, so there had to be another character observing and stuff like that. That's I think uh, also yeah. the constraints of doing it on uh, sticky notes and trying to make it all work within there is also a good practice to try to get the communicate what you're trying to say on such a small space. Yeah, yeah. If, I, I do like that. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's like, th is this clear enough? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's good. I'm not like super attached to the to that. I felt good about the practice as well, and. Um, yeah, that's and so that's so what but but John, you were bringing up like potentially what we could practice next. Oh, sure. <laughs> if you guys want to I mean, give that a shot. Because I mean, just to borrow your idea for a prompt. And so was that sort of combining then? So if I if I heard you right, you were like push a pose as far as like make it something besides just some straight on shot. And mm -hmm. then uh but but prompted by like the Sketchamania prompts? Yes. Ooh, interesting. All right. Yeah, that I'd would be. To visit that. I'd love to see what you guys would come up with. 
Well, because I saw you posting these too, and I, I just pulled up uh, on Instagram. So it was marge.jpeg is, mm -hmm. is the the creator of that. And um, that's and that's that's a great resource. So it's like we don't have to invent prompts. We can just right. use the Sketchmania prompts. How do you, how do you um, spell that so I can pull it up on screen? So it's Instagram.com slash Marge, M-A-R-J, period. So dot JPEG, JPG. Okay. So I pronounce JPG as JPEG. <laughs> I can't not. <clears throat> okay. So there's, there's the Instagram account to follow so that we can get the prompts for the Sketchamania prompts to design. Honest, I'm going to just use sticky notes. Sketch out a cool looking pose that looks great from another angle. Besides straight on. All right. What do you, any other thoughts on that, John, or is that? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Um, I, I think um, also something that's going to be good about doing, doing it like for two minutes is trying not to be so, so precious with the design and just try to, again, like with the, the communicate the pose and um, you guys don't have to turn them into monsters, but like, I want to make sure that it's clear the type of monster and what this monster looks like and what it, you know, if it has one eye, if it has three eyes, if it has four arms, you know, make yeah. sure that that works. Yeah. That's, it, that's a whole different, uh, yeah, level of challenge too. So yeah, going from just, it's just, it's more than biped, right? It's, it could be, right. who knows? Is Maybe it a no no pad? Human form. That's something yeah. that I actually, I actually struggle with. Like I'm gonna try to do something that isn't so human looking because mm -hmm. they're monsters, right? Like mm -hmm. let's stay away from human design and try to create more monsterly type shapes. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. All right. Well, we're off. We got our uh, prompts. We're ready to do the two minute challenge this week. So thank you, Rob. Thank you, John. Yeah, thank you both so much. Thank you, guys. Okay, I think we have done a podcast and a half. So, uh, gosh, anything else that you would like to point people at, John, um, that you'd like them to, to something, I guess I should say, what action would you like people to take today having participated in this podcast and listened to all the stuff we had to share and talk about? Uh Check out nightmareprowrestling.com. You can see all of the uh, jerseys, awesome pages. They're all up there now. Uh, check out the Nightmare Pro Wrestling Instagram. And uh, I'm on there too, if you want to give me a follow on there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Great. Um, yeah, the first 20 pages are up now. That's the story, that the, the match that I penciled and inked. And uh, starting next week, there'll be another match. Who's the, who's next on the on the roster? Who, what's the next match? It's uh, Maldito versus Handsome Horse. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, well, we're gonna yeah. be doing like uh, two weeks of intermissions, and I'm actually gonna be doing those comics, which is oh kind of fun for me. So, uh, and it's gonna be more like world building, short mini comics. So that'll be fun. Oh, That's you've been awesome. sharing some of the process of those uh, on Instagram recently, right? Right, right. Yeah, like the the first uh, intermission is going to be Doctor Nightmare, who's like the the owner of Nightmare Pro Wrestling. He's going to be talking about like uh, like Graven Lobo's finishing move, and there's some little gags that I have in there with the referees. They're going to be in the background. So this, this is like when they would take the camera back behind the scenes and have the characters all doing some kind of bits and skits. Like the, right, in the exactly. old days, they would have like a backdrop and it would be like Roddy Piper with a microphone yelling <laughs> at some other wrestler for a while. Right. Well, um, uh, uh, a preview of the gag is the, the little chubby Muppet wrestlers, whatever you want, uh, uh, referees, whatever you want to yeah. call them. They're pulling down the screen <laughs> and then the screen won't stay down. So the, the referees keep coming back up and, uh, <laughs> you know, hijinks. <laughs> I do. I do love those little Muppet referees at the Wubba's. Uh, ah, man, John, I, I just like, let me take this opportunity to also say like, thank you so much for letting me be a part of that book. Uh, it was a joy to draw and I'm so excited that people finally get to read it. Um, 
I think anybody who's a fan of any of my comics will love this comic because it does all the things that I enjoy doing. So, um, so Thank yeah. Thank you for being a part of it. I'm, I'm glad you said yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Super cool. Well, yeah. Thank you, John. And thank you, Jersey. Once again. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Jersey. All right. We record the show weekly on Thursdays at noon Eastern time, uh, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Pacific. And we stream it live on twitch.tv slash lean into art and then collect it as a podcast at lean into art.com and patreon.com slash lean into art. We'll be back next time with another episode. Until then, I've been Jersey Drozd of lean into art.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. And I've been Rob Stenzinger, also of leanintoart.com. And you can find me on Instagram as Rob Stenzinger. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart. And you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.